So, continuation of our grandson's birthday present. Never notice how one thing leads into another, leads into another, leads into another. That's a wonderful thing about being a grand, a grandpa, is you got all the time in the world. This retirement thing is unbelievably awesome. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so on the compression tester, <coughs> got 30 pounds. Not a good sign. Um, I always figured, you know, I'm no professional mechanic or anything like that. I've spun a few wrenches and bought and sold a few bikes and lawnmowers and garden tractors and cars and yeah, 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 yeah. Through the years, I always go by a 90-pound rule. I like to see 90 pounds. Hey, you want to debate that? Comment. Tell me. Yeah, fuck your nuts. It's crazy. They'll run on 60. They'll run on 40. They'll run on 30. Well, this one was 30 and this one don't run. So, I got the top end off. I got the rocker cover off, and guess what I discovered? Yeah, they copied Honda, or or somebody halfway intelligent. So what you do here, can you see where I'm pointing this camera now? All right, here's the exhaust rocker, and you can tell it's fairly easy common sense for anybody that ever. It's probably 99.9% .9 of you already know this, and I'm just double speaking. But you see the exhaust pipe right there? That leads up to an exhaust port right there. And there's an exhaust valve that goes down right there. And this rocker that I got a hold of right here. Can you see that? That rocker. And what you do is you you run your uh, you run your uh, your pot your piston uh, to top dead center on a compression stroke. Are you following me? <laughs> Which is not always easy because some of these things you can't you can't get on into the crank to turn the to turn the piston over. So you just kind of gotta guesstimate and watch where they're landing when you push the starter button, kind of roll around little by little. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do it, but but uh, on, on something like this that's an automatic that, you, that there's no way you can spin that crank without a major dismantle. You can do what I want to, but you run it to. Top dead center or thereabouts. On get around a compression stroke. That'll put your camshaft. That'll put your uh, exhaust, your exhaust uh, lobe on the camshaft and your intake lobe on the camshaft off the rockers. Okay, off the faces of the rockers. Okay, and then all you got to do is just grab a hold of them and see if they'll move. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I hear that. Can you hear that in the camera? Stupid cow. You know, it's just like at home back in Michigan. It's a blessing and a curse. Cars always go by at just the right time when you're trying to show somebody something. Now listen real close. Listen. Hear it? Exhaust valve is fine. Is it, Well, I'm, I'm not going to say I haven't measured it yet. I don't know if... I don't know if I... Prob, I my son-in-law's probably got a set of... Uh, set of uh, feeler gauges, but, you know, this is no, this isn't home, okay, after, after, let me see here, 20, 40, 40, 50, start with 50, after 50, 57 years of collecting tools, <laughs> I got more tools, I got tools that I haven't seen since I moved from Fruitport 30 years ago, whatever it was. All right, so anyway, so now, now, like I was telling you about that intake, now listen to this. I'm trying to get this down in here where you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, now this will be your intake rocker. Yes, and I've got a hold of that intake rocker, and it is solid. There is no play in it whatsoever, which means the valve, that intake valve is probably gone tight. No, I'm not going to say that this is going to fix it because, you know, it could have... It could have uh, smoked the valve, got some dirt underneath the valve, and held it open and whatever. But it's pretty hard, in my experience, it's pretty hard to burn an intake valve. Um, not so on an exhaust valve, because that's where the exhaust is going. But on an intake valve, it's not that maybe they do run cooler because there's no exhaust going across them. But if they pit or whatever, they, they're of lost compression, so they can't fire, so they can't burn. So um, what I'm going to do is... Now I'll take another angle with this thing. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. I'm trying to get this thing set up so I can see what I'm showing you here. All right, here we go. Pay attention now. Pay attention. 
pay attention. You see that screw right there that I'm pointing at? Do I need a pointer? I'll try this. You see that screw right there that I'm talking about? Right there. Okay? And you see this nut, this 10 millimeter nut? So what you do, you run her to top dead center compression stroke so your so your camshaft is in a relaxed position. What I would call a relaxed position. You're not pressing up on the rockers at all with either one of the lobes. And then you break that you break that nut loose and you adjust that screw right there. Alright? Now on a Briggs and Stratton, can you see the valve? Can you see the valve? Uh, it looks to me like they got the, the normal everyday little keepers that fit into a slot on that on the on that little valve cover that goes over the top of the spring right there. That's what holds the spring in the in the valve in place and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, uh, top of that is the is the surface of the valve. That this bolt that I'm bumping into right there. See that? That bolt right there. Adjust against the, that surface of the valve, okay? So what you do is you back that off, stick a three thousandths. I'm not saying that this is spec either. This is just where I've always gone. I always like my valves, even if they're a little bit noisy. I'd rather have them too loose and too tight. Personal personal opinion. Some people are backwards of that. I don't know. But that's how I always do it. And I probably never will change because I'm retired and old and I shouldn't even be doing this. <laughs> My back is so sore right now. I can't hardly stand up. <laughs> My knees are killing me. I'll shut up. But anyway, uh, Joshua and Pacemaker is doing fine though. Um, you back that off. Put the 3,000 shim under. 3,000 feeler gauge underneath it. Snug that. Snug that little bolt right there back up. Just with your fingertips. Just push it against it so it's tight. And then lock that. Lock that nut back now. Now I'm going to tell you something. Something that some people find that I found out numerous times is it's not always easy to hold that screw in place while you're retightening that that nut. What'll happen is as you tighten the nut up, it'll move that screw a little bit and it'll mess up your adjustment. So they make a they make an actual wrench to do all this with. Okay, <laughs> Motion Pro or one of them. I mean, but now I'm old school. Okay, I've been doing this way before Motion Pro was even thought of. And uh and I usually just I usually just make do with like a box. Do a box and and wrench and kinda of get a hold of it and be real careful. Uh 'cause it 'cause it, that top of that screw is hex shaped. Alright? And the and the whatchamacallit and the nut is no, the top of that screw is is uh square and then the nut of course is hex shaped. Okay. Six point. So um, use a box on the what you call it, and then just take a. Um, I don't know. I've got special tools at home that I do this with, but you can take a pair of uh, good little pair of uh, adjustables or something like that that you can get a hold of it with and just hold it in place. It can be it can be kind of time consuming and tender, but but it's totally doable with just your everyday hand tools. Okay, that makes sense. So hey, look at this. I'll tell you a little story about here. Look at this. This is pretty cool. Do you know that the YZs? Now I know this for a fact. Yeah, this is a called. I think it's called a hy hypoid or hyphoid multi-plate chain. See that right there? It's cam chain. All right. That's a really good chain. It gives it a gear surface. So you got three little or two or three little keepers. Um, a lot of the bikes have got like six, eight plates on them. I mean, they make a regular geared surface, so it runs a gear instead of a sprocket like a bicycle does. Like the YZs and stuff, when they, YZFs and stuff, when they first come out. I don't know if they still do today or not, but they ran uh, uh, just roller chain in them. And a Honda, Honda 350, let me think back now. Um, some of the, in the roller chains anyway, are uh, stretch really bad. I mean, they'll run, they'll stretch. I had one stretch so bad on a Honda 350 one time. <laughs> one of the things that it ate through the cylinders. In between the cylinders, there's a channel that they run through, and it got so sloppy that it ate through. And a buddy of mine and I, he was living with, he's deceased now, man, I miss him. But uh, uh, he's like, you know, you could just clean it up and put some bubble gum in there. We did. <laughs> it worked, but it worked for a while. 
kept the oil from shooting out all over the place. Anyway, that's a that's a that's pretty amazing for a little Chinese motor. They're using that. I want to call it a hyphoid or hypoid or whatever uh, multi-plate chain. See that? That's pretty cool. That's really really cool. Not a bad looking little outfit. You know, you can buy this whole head assembly. This whole head assembly. I was looking online last night looking for parts. You can buy this whole set head assembly for thirty bucks. I think my son-in-law paid fifteen dollars for that whole carburetor. And I'm wondering. Here, I want to show you guys. Oh, it has this, it's a blessing and a curse. This kid always. I got some extra parts here. I'm gonna bring home. You venture riders, look at this. You see what that is right there? That's a Chinese carburetor. That whole carburetor was fifteen dollars. Now I was working on this the other day. Well, last time I was out here, and I was telling my son-in-law that he paid fifteen dollars for that. And I had a diaphragm out of the old carburetor um, that we were that it was running on all that time. Um, somebody had put the uh, spring on the metering rod in on the wrong side of the metering metering rod retainer, and uh, it was flooding. I pushed put it back around, and lo and behold, my grandson got a go-kart running. Um, and uh, so when I had that apart, I'm like, you know, this really doesn't look that far off the um, the slide and the, the slide and the diaphragm. Don't look that far off. I'm going to drag one. I'm going to drag one home and just compare it to uh, one of my uh, one of my Venture Yamaha yeah, Venture slides and see how close it is. Wouldn't it be cool if we could buy like a slide, a new slide? Carberry or new slide, new diaphragm assembly for six bucks. I'll find out. We're gonna, we're gonna. I'll check into it. I will. I have the wherewithal. So anyway, there you have it. Not take up so much of your time. But I'll let you know whether this works or not. Whether this thing runs or not. Okay.